All righty. What is going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. How is everybody? Everybody in the chat? And oh, there's a couple of people on YouTube. I know I, did, I didn't go do my normal thing and post it on YouTube. So I, I didn't imagine we'd get a lot of uh, people on tonight, but it's been a while. Uh, high school volleyball season really uh, always every year puts a damper on my Tuesday calls. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. And you know what? Bear with me. Let me throw my AC down just a second. All righty. All right. There we go. So, yep, it is a, you know, we're getting into the end of November. And uh, obviously, we've got NFP coming up first week of December. We've got a huge, huge U.S. holiday coming up Thursday and realistically Friday. Um, so this week, I really haven't been doing much. Um, you know, last week, I had some really good plays. And <clears throat> I knew that I was going to be really tied up with uh, some of the other things that I was working on, new projects that I'm doing. And uh, before we get into the charts, I mean, I'll kind of go and touch on just some of the projects that I am working on. Um, you know, most of you guys have been in the crypto space. And I mean, for if, if, <laughs> if you just woke up out of the and, and got out of bed, you probably haven't noticed that the crypto markets have been selling off. Uh, but that's something we've been anticipating um, this entire year, ever since the all time highs of last uh, November. You know, I've been calling BTC coming down to 10. So, and realistically, I've got orders all the way down to like 5,500. So with that, you know, I'm, I'm obviously expanding or preparing to expand my, uh, my crypto stake in the market, um, both from purchasing uh, the actual assets to, to mining. Um, most of you guys know I, I GPU mine and I ASIC mine. And yeah, if, if you're not looking, especially if you're looking to get into mining now, the barrier to entry is, I mean, extremely low. Uh, miners that I, was, I wasn't even contemplating looking at last, last year were selling for like 60000 for an ASIC for like a KD, KD Max that does Cadena. And uh, you can pick them up right now for like 3500 And if you really peruse the, like the eBay and Facebook marketplace and Macari markets, uh, you can get them even cheaper. Uh, I've been picking up, I've picked up three ASIC miners in the last like two weeks for pennies. I mean, realistically pennies. I, I picked up a Bitcoin miner for $1,300 for an SJ919 uh, Pro which was selling for, you know, anywhere between 13 and 17,000 a couple of months ago. But uh, crypto wise, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm definitely expanding on, uh, on my stake in that. And then of course, you know, just continuing to try to do and look for better opportunities. You know, I've been looking at some, uh, some other prop firms, some new ones that have popped up. Um, I actually just, uh, most of the guys in my group, uh, saw, I, I had just, uh, completed a, uh, TFT challenge and, uh, I'm actually waiting to start the verification. I haven't started the verification yet, <clears throat> but the challenge was pretty easy. I liked the spreads on the broker. They use a cap. So, um, that may be something I do, especially with, uh, you know, again, I'm not married to a prop firm, so I have no allegiance to any of them. And, you know, those of you guys that are on TPT have definitely seen an increase in spreads for what they're doing. And, and it's truly just because they're not trading and they're, they're not utilizing an ECN account. You know, um, commissions are paid uh, or I'm sorry, commissions are not paid up front. So they, they price in the fee for the broker into the spread. Um, which prop firm was it? TFT, bro. Yeah, yeah. TFT. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you, I mean, yeah, yeah you saw. <laughs> you know, we I, I was doing it every morning with you guys. So yeah, prop firm Playboy. Um, all right, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could tell me about it later. <clears throat> I'm I'm always looking. I'm always looking for you know a a you know a newer firm because again, I'm not married to them. I don't expect them to be around for a very long time. You know, I mean, prop firms are like Seven Elevens. They pop up all over the place, and then they go out of business. So. <clears throat> okay i got you bro i got you so anyway so yeah i mean that's kind of what i'm doing um and you know I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy with how this year has played out obviously you know i talk about it every year december 
the last week of December, I always kind of finish out my books and, you know, just, just doing my month to month journals, my PLs and stuff. I mean, I've, I've already, I can, I know that I had a better year than I did last year um, overall. So, you know, I'm, I've, I've taken less trades with more profit and, you know, for me, that's, that's the goal. So looking, looking at the week ahead again, you know, Thursday and Friday, I mean, you could see we have absolutely zero fundamentals on Friday. It's a huge shopping day for those of you guys that, um, you know, are looking to invest into this career, into this profession. You know, I would definitely dive into, you know, you, you know, that trading view is offering their, uh, their, Black Friday special, and it's actually a better deal this year. The 60% off, I think they actually, because <clears throat> I was looking at it, I got 50%. Um, I got 50% off last year. And I, I'd never really do it through during Black Friday because you can get the you can get the essentially the deal any time of the year. You just have to know how to do it. Um, but definitely take advantage of it. You get a free month plus 60% off. I think it's like 270 bucks for the uh you know, for the plus or not the plus, but the professional, whatever it is, whatever the, the one that gives you the seconds, the premium. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 288 bucks, which is a whole lot better because I think uh, when I, so I paid it in crypto last time and I paid like 300 and like 70 something. So um, <clears throat> yeah, you, you paid it the same. It was the same amount, 288. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, at least they didn't increase their prices because I'd have, I'd have issues with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, you could see I got 153 days left on mine. So every, I just, I know how to get the the 50 to 60% off. So that's what I do. Cause I, I really can't justify spending five, six, 700 bucks on trading view, but everything, uh, you know, if you look, I've been posting it on my Twitter, Twitter feed. And if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, definitely, um, definitely give it a look because I have, especially with trading view, trading view so much, it's really streamlined with, uh, with Twitter. So I'll post some of my charts. I'll post anything that I come across that I'm like, oh man, this is pretty good. So I've been posting on my Twitter uh, the last couple of days, a lot of the prop firms that I come across that, um, you know, that have deals. So definitely give me a follow. I'll, uh, you know, you'll definitely be able to pick up on some of the, uh, some of the stuff that I have. And it's all it is, is this right here. You know, you can just do add fib and, fibs and profits. So, and on YouTube, it's definitely, you can, you know, you can sit there and you can just copy it off of my YouTube page here. I'll drop it in the link here too on Zoom. Uh, Hold on, bear with me. I was trying to copy it off of... Oh, for the love, hold on. I was trying to copy it off my iPad, but yeah, it's it's got this long flipping thing right here. Nope, hold on. Let's just do it. Anyway, yeah, you can figure it out. It's just at Fibs and Profit here. Let me copy it. Hold on. Yeah, anyway, uh, can anyone see a screen or is my data just bad? Can you guys not see my screen? Yeah, it's all good, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, it's it's... It's all, this is it right here for anybody that, uh, there we go. For anybody that's not following it, hold on. Yep, there we go. All right, so that's it there. Um, but definitely give it a look. Uh, like I said, I've been posting a lot of stuff on it uh, from my feed and um, anything prop firm related. The other thing I've been looking at is I've been buying uh, some metals. And there's a huge sale coming out. This is a, and I'll post this as well. Um, this is definitely something that I am looking to do, hold on, with, uh, with some metals, especially the price of silver, right? I've been buying silver for a, a while. Um, There we go. So <clears throat> this is somewhere where I'm going to be looking to um, purchase some physical metals. And uh, they're always pretty good. They're pretty good on spot. Uh, they're reputable. You, they, they ship everywhere in the world. Um, you can even store it in their vaults. So um, really good place. <clears throat> you thought you wanted it to come lower. Um, sure. But 
what happens if it doesn't? You're going to miss the boat. I mean, I'm all about um, taking advantage of a sale going on during Black Friday where I can get potentially, you know, 15% off. So that's what they're, that's what they're talking about, you know? Um, so, yeah, you know, why not? I mean, do we have any guarantee, right? For me on silver, do I have any guarantee that, where's commodities? There we go. Do I have any guarantee that we're going to come down to 16? We've already tapped into, we've already tapped what? $17.50. So I started, I wanted to start buying at 16, came with a dollar or 50 of it. So, and we got this massive accumulation going on here, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've been buying, I've been buying for the past month. I've just been buying a little bit every week. So the off topic, but you get into the charts. Do you have any recommendations for business bank accounts? So if, in, if you're in the U S um, yeah, I mean, if you're outside of the U.S., I can't help you. But um, I would say this for a business bank account. Um, I personally have two types of business accounts. I have a brick and mortar, um, which is one that when I need to go get documents signed, notarized, when I need to deposit cash, you know, things like that. I have a brick and mortar. Uh, I tip. I personally use TD Bank. The reason I use TD Bank is because it's linked to my TD Ameritrade account. Um, and that's what I used to trade futures with. Honestly, um, I would say whichever is going to give you for a brick and mortar, whichever is going to give you the best deal. You know, I really don't focus too much on like the fees that they charge because all those fees you write off at the end of the year anyway, right? Um, if you have a profitable year, you're you're going to be able, even if you don't have a profitable year, you can write it off, right? You can write it off for up to three years. Um, but I would recommend having a brick and mortar one. And then do one of these online ones. That's what I did. I used to use Brex, which was phenomenal, man, because they used to give cash back on like, I used to get five time points on travel. I used to get like, when I take Uber, it was like 10 times the points. Um, obviously, Brex kind of went a different way. Uh, everyone that had a small business kind of got uh, canceled from them. And they're only going to go with people that are, I think, essentially venture capitalists. That's what they're doing. Um, but I do use um, I do use Novo now. Um, it's not the greatest. I would recommend this for a business account. Um, get something that gives you the best cash back that you can. You know, um, I'm t I'm looking at a couple other options right now that you know give me like two and a half percent cash back because I spend, you know, realistically from a business standpoint, I spend a lot of money for my business every year. You know, when you think about it, I pay electricity, I pay phone bills, I pay you know, um, I travel, you know, all of my business expenses are used. Um, and I typically always want a, either a credit card. And that's what I have is a, is a credit card now for my business account that I get cash back on, but I always like to double dip. I like to also have it so that when I make purchases with like an associated credit card from that business, you know, that bank that I'm using, I'm going to get, you know, extra cash back. And, you know, to, to give you an idea, like every year for the past three, four years, you know, I've, I've spent in excess of six figures just on my business for expenses, you know, and imagine getting 3% back on that. So, you know, three and a half percent back on that. I mean, that's, that's free money and, you know, definitely, definitely do some work, um, you know, looking through and, and there's, there's ways to, you know, there's, um, comparison charts that you can find on the internet. And that's what I did. I just kind of dove into it and looked at it. Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking, <clears throat> I'm definitely looking at taking advantage of some of the Black Friday stuff. There's also, and if you go, if you go into my YouTube channel, <clears throat> um, I'm personally looking at some upgrading some of my computer hardware. Um, if you go on YouTube, I've got the, um, I've got an Amazon store link that you can go to. Um, and you can, um, like I've thrown some stuff that I'm actually watching to look to see what's going to happen either on Amazon or on Newegg. Those are the two places I'm really going to be focused on in upgrading my computer stuff. If you're a Mac guy, um, if you're a Mac guy, one of the best places, right? I'll tell you right now to go is OWC. Um, 
And this is somewhere where like I've purchased all of my Macs from, uh, I know my brother's purchased from it as well. Um, so it's these guys right here and they're having a huge sale. Uh, can you guys see all the cashback stuff that I do here? Are you guys able to see all that or no? Up here on the right. No. Can you guys hear me or no? Nobody hear me? Yeah, you can see it. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you what, this is all free money, man. You guys, you guys need to have in your Google Chrome, you know, I do Ibotta, I do. So I get that. I'll do 3% back on Coupon Cabin. I'll do 1.5% back on Backify, right? Um, I get, I mean, I'll tell you right now, affiliate links and um, affiliate links are a way to just get free money back. Um, and I mean, it, does it add up to a lot? No, but I'll tell you what, I probably get about a couple thousand bucks back every year, just in, in those, you know, and that's, that's, uh, that's exactly what I do. But for, for Mac guys, if you're looking to upgrade your Macs, uh, go to here, go to this website, OWC, you know, they have a really, really nice, this is where I purchased like my Mac mini. Uh, I know my brother was looking at a Mac pro out of it. Um, but they have everything in here and it's, it's, you know, they can upgrade if you want to pay for the upgrade, you can do it in there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to be taking advantage of all of that stuff this week and we'll see, we'll see what happens. So starting it off, right. Getting into the weeds of this, um, what we have here is we have just a, a pretty dismal U S dollar week, right? We're not expecting a lot of U S dollar movement. I still feel like dollar is going to go sideways just a little bit longer, but we do have the Kiwi cash rate coming out, uh, actually coming out in 33 minutes. So, and you can already see last month, they came in at three and a half percent and they're going for the whole 75% basis points again. I don't think they're actually going to do a 75% basis point. I think it's actually going to be a little lower. Uh, I think they're going to come in at 4% total, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, it'll be on the call, so I'll watch it. But that's really the only news that I'm really focused on. Um, you know, inflation numbers for German, you know, the German economy, French economy, uh, the pound, right? These inflation numbers, it is what it is. Uh, I, I don't really see um, a reason for the market to pivot off of those. And then everything else, I mean, US dollar wise, I mean, again, we have some uh, service PMI inflation numbers that are going to come out. Not really going to move anything. We know new home sales is going to be down. Uh, this is probably going to be a miss, but I really don't see it happening or giving us a reason to really move the market. The only two things I see this week that are going to move the market are the Kiwi. And whenever we get it, whenever they di the market digests what the next play for the, uh, for the FOMC is going to be, All right? That's what I'm going to be watching. Um, and that's about it. I mean, so what, I, what I've been looking at the last couple of weeks, you know, the U.S. dollar, for me, is just sideways, right? I'm uh, I, I'm expecting it to continue to accumulate and continue to go bullish. Um, can we come a little lower? We can. So for me, EU and GU are just off the table. I mean, they're not they're not in anything that I want to do. But what I have been looking at is because the Australian dollar has been really driving its market. Um, I've been looking at AUUSD. Uh, and because I'm looking at AU, I'm also looking at NU. I've been looking at ACAD and I've been waiting on ACAD and NCAD to really give me something. So these are the ones that I'm really, really paying attention to. And last week, AU gave some really, really nice entries. Um, I've been looking at AU. Um, I have been looking at, um, you know, EJ, seeing if I can work something into that. And UJ has also kind of been popping in there. Right. So those are two that I've been really focused on. And of course, indices is something I'm watching for the shorts. <clears throat> and the new one that's kind of popped in is gold. I've been I've been watching gold. Uh, some of the guys in my group kind of uh, showed me some good price action that I haven't seen in a while on gold. So I'm, I'm definitely interested in shorting it. So that's kind of what I've been watching. All right. That's kind of what my my thought process is and what I want to go with. And uh I mean, diving into it. So here is, here's my primary watch list, right? Um, again, EU and GU are not something I'm actively going to be looking for. Um, you know, these two right here. Yeah. U chef, 
it's a maybe, and we'll kind of go through these, but I have them on here because when I've got, I've got them boxed out and when an alert goes off, whether we go to the upside or to the downside, I know now what I'm going to do with it. So, and we'll, we'll kind of go through it. I'll, I'll give you my thought process on it. All right. So first things first is dollar, right? And, you know, what I've been watching on the dollar here <clears throat> is we have come back into an area where I really wanted to see a clean accumulation. And I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted us to be here for a while, right? I wanted it to build a, a larger schematic. And when the reason I say that is when you look back at any time that the dollar has essentially reversed, right? You know, we just come over here and we look at, look at this price action here. This was, this was a market reversal, right? How long were we there? 92 days, right? When you look at, I mean, when you look at this reversal down here, right? How long were we here? 74 days. How long were we, how long were we here, right? We were 40 days. You know, anytime you see a reversal, I mean, you come back over here, right? Look at this big sell-off here. How long were we here? We were here 32 days, right? We've only been here like six going on maybe seven at this point. So I feel like this is not where I think we're going to reverse from. I think this is just a momentary momentary area for buyers to kind of come in. I do think potentially that we could come lower, right? So I'm not ready to really get into buys on the dollar yet because this accumulation doesn't give me any confluence. So what I need to see is I want to see, and you can see my alerts sitting up here. I want to see what happens when we get up here. Or I want to see what happens when we take the low. And that's really what my, my mindset's going to be on the dollar. Um, do, I think that, <clears throat> do I think that all of this will go to crap with our next FOMC meeting? Absolutely. Because if the Fed doubles down and increases rates at the rate that they've been doing it, you can guarantee that we're going to do this and we'll have a new all-time high. Uh, well, not an all-time high, but we'll have a new yearly high on the dollar index. Right. So really everything is going to have to, for me, is going to be just on a, on a, on the back burner for the next two to three weeks with the dollar. Cause I really want to see, I, I don't see us coming up to this area here this week. And I don't really see anything else happening um, until we get through at least NFP. I want to see what the jobs reports kind of say, you know, we are still uh, in the, in the up cycle of the market though. Right. I mean, that's, that's essentially where we're, where we're trading with the dollar. Uh, what do you think about price action on dollar of where we played into on a monthly? Well, on a monthly. So you're talking about up here? Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the last couple of videos that I did, I was looking that I was expecting that the dollar was going to give us a reversal, right? From, and you could see, here was my alert, right? That's where I was expecting us to come into right here, right? That's if you, if you mark it out, if you mark it out, where have we come? Right to the 80%, right? So I felt like that, that was going to be an area where we were going to sell off from. So, but I can't, I personally cannot start hedging dollar positions yet until we invalidate this right here. I need us to break. So what I essentially want to see dollar do in order for me to start hedging positions is I want us to come back up into this redistribution and I want us to break. And then I'll start hedging my positions and I'll start shorting dollar crosses. But until that happens, I'm not going to do anything yet. Is it lagging for anyone else? I don't know. It could be. Yeah, it could be. Dude, my, my internet lately has been really, really bad. So yeah. Would I not play continuation on the dollar if it gives it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. But my continuation would involve us taking out at minimum this redistribution here. So there's nothing for me to play on the dollar at this point. You know, we're just kind of in limbo. What about that? Yeah, what about it? What's the significance of that high? Just considering DXY is bullish hole. Yeah, yeah, but what's the significance of this high? 
it could be bullish all day long, but what's that price action tell you? Yep. Just order flow. So I, I suck at, I suck at trading order flow. You know, if order flow comes into leg structure, if order flow comes into points of interest, sure. But just strictly order flow in a clear bearish cycle at this point from the distribution redistro and potentially the redistribution after that. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm personally not going to risk any of my equity on it. I'll go do something. I'll go trade something else that is obviously in the directional that I want to play it, but I mean, you can absolutely, you can. It's for me, it's, it's too much of a risk. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that position without all my confirmations there and my confirmations right now are, are nothing we have nothing this this here this price action if i come what is it maybe like a one hour let's see i come to a one hour chart <clears throat> this this right here doesn't give me confidence that buyers have filled orders and that they want to take this up i don't have that i don't have that confirmation what I have is I just have I just have a trend line, you know. But this isn't giving me confirmations. This isn't giving me confluence that buyers, this is it. This this was the line in the sand for them and we're going up now. You know, so I'm not I'm not interested in trying to take anything out of here. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, okay. So that's that's kind of my thought process on EU. I mean, realistically, I'd like for us to get up here. Because I'd like to see if they're going to distribute out of here to short this down. And, you know, if that happens, like I said, that's that's where I I feel like I'm going to start hedging my positions because I'm still holding long-term EU and GU shorts. Um, real quick on the on EG, right? On EG, I am I'm liking the price action, right? I mean, if you look at what EG is doing, very, very clean price action. Um, I like the distribution. Actually, do I even have it marked out here? Let's see. I thought I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I like the distribution that we're seeing. Um, <clears throat> I am, I'm personally in a position on it from Friday morning. But um, yeah, I mean, what I, what I like to do is I'd like for us to come back into this price action right here. That's, that's what I want to see. Um, you could kind of see the accumulation. What I'd want to happen now is the sign of strength turned shakeout to get into this area here so that we can short off and redistribute, right? That's ideally what I want to play. So I do like, I do like the, the EG shorts, um, you know, overall, and I've said this to a bunch of people already that if, if I can get into a decent entry, um, I will be, I will be targeting this low down here. And more importantly, I'm going to, I'm going to be looking to position myself into this for the long haul, because I'm going to be looking to target this price action down here right down here. So I want to get down to like at least the 7,200 level is where I want to get down to. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but on, like I said, on EG, I do have alerts up here. Um, I do, well, I did have an alert. Hold on. I think, I think it moved. All right. So I will look for shorts out of here. There we go. So I will look for shorts um, out of this candle right here. And all it is, is the crossover into New York, right? It is the last, um, it is the last manipulation before the entire sell-off. Um, now, as we get closer, so if we start trading down here, I really don't want us to accumulate without breaking this low. So if we do get to the point where it's no longer feasible for me to trade this, where it's at, it's no, it's too much of a risk. I'll just wait for the break and then play continuation, move off of that. But I do like, I do like where it's at. And I mean, that trade from Friday, I mean, it was a pretty, pretty easy play. It was just out of, um, it was just out of Friday crossover. I got up Thursdays and Fridays. I do get up for crossover. Um, just pretty clean play. Um, she came right in. I had a split entry off the 1580 of Frankfurt. Um, she came in right into the 50, tagged me in and off she went. So I don't know what she's sitting at right now. It's not, it's not too much of a big entry just because it, it was only half risk because the other half was on the 80%, but she did get, 
she'd get about 84 pips in profit. So, and that's where I'm kind of holding it from. Um, <clears throat> you're playing around with deciding which holds more influence, liquidity or mark market structure. For example, I've been bearish on in EU, but it took liquidity below monthly structure from 2002 and then went on a bull run. It took the high when DXY refused to take the low, what makes you see structure as king instead of liquidity. Um, well, so you gotta, you've got to look at structure. You've got to look at market cycle, which essentially is going to be your liquidity. But you also got to throw in the fundamentals there. So I guess here's, here's the one question I have for you. You, you talk about a bull run on, on dollar index or on EU? You're talking about on EU, right? EU went on a bull run. So let's look at it. So I guess the question is, where's your bull run? Because you're still in this massive leg here, right? Hold on. You're still in this massive leg here. So where's your bull run? You know, when we look at this, I mean, this is still looking pretty bearish to me. You know, do I expect price to come higher? Absolutely. I mean, that's where I'm expecting price to come to right there. It's the first true shift in market structure. Yeah, but I don't think it's market structure shift. I mean, let me ask you a question. If price is doing this, That right there, this movement right here, that's that's a that's what you would categorize as a market structure shift. No, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, but um, I mean, look at it. So this is the weekly time frame. Let's go to the four hour time frame. This is again. This is a market shift. I mean, for, for me, it's not. I mean, we're still massively bearish. And this is where I want it to come right here. This, this is what caused the break over here. So it won't be a, a shift in market structure for me until we at least take out my slingshot up here. And then I would anticipate us coming up into what's maintaining the leg structure. You know, this move on EU is a pullback to get into. Yeah, absolutely. For me, that's all it is. It's to get into more premium. You know, you, you, we talk about, I mean, we could talk about the structure and the and liquidity and stuff, but what's, let me ask you a question. What's the purpose of liquidity? To be taken? No. What's the purpose of it? Why, why do they need to fill orders? Exactly. That's all it is to fill orders. So why would, yeah, that's all it is. So let me ask you a question. Why would, why would like in a bearish market, right? In a bearish market, why would they sweep lows? Why would they need to sweep lows to get liquidity for what? So they can push the market. Yeah, so, no, not for buys. They could really care less about the buys. What do they want to do? They just want to push the market back into premium so they could sell more. That's all it is. Now, the question I would ask is this. Fundamentally, can anyone give me three reasons why Euro USD should go bullish? Fundamentally. You guys, you guys that live over in Europe, in the European Union, what's the Euro? What, what is the ECB doing to strengthen the Euro?
Anybody? So what's what's giving what's giving the banks or bank or the bank or banks, the institutions that are moving this up, what's giving them reason to go bullish? It's just to what? To entice buyers to get in. Think about how many buyers have gotten into the market down here. And I really hope they come up to here. This is where I want us to come, right here. I'd love for us to come here by the end of the year. And then what happens? All these people that are in buys here, that's liquidity for the sell so that it can just short off. Right? I hope we can get up there. I don't know if we're going to, right? I don't know if we're going to get up here, but I hope we do. That's that's my target right there. This move right here from February. That's where I want us to get. Uh, they are starting. Uh, they are starting to increase. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yep. So in order for in order for Euro USD fundamentally to overtake to be bullish, because we know that if Euro if the Euro index is going to go bullish, we know that the dollar index is going to go bearish. So if the ECB is in, is increasing rates, that means that they have to overpower the Fed. Have you been keeping up with the Federal Reserve has been doing the last six months? Is has anyone has anyone wasn't recent CPI a catalyst for dollar weakness? So I mean we could talk about that, right? What what did the so what was the CPI data tell you? Uh, yields are dropping off on what? On which one? Because if you look at if you look at the dollar, right? So if you look at the ten year, yeah, I mean we're we're off the highs, but we're we're still pretty damn high on the ten year. <laughs> we're still pretty. Pretty high. Inflation getting lower, at least people anticipating the looking. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah. So let's, th let's talk about it. Did inflation, did inflation go down or did it, did it not go as high as forecasted? Core did by 2.2. Uh, I, 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 I'd bet you a million dollars that the core did not go down 0.2%. <laughs> I can guarantee you it didn't go down 0.2%. Just look at look at the fundamentals behind it. Hold on, let's go to so what did this number tell what does this number represent? What does that number represent on the month to month? Did it go down 0.2%? Or did inflation increase 0.2% and they were forecasting 0.4? Yeah, so inflation still went up, right? All this is saying is month to month, we stayed the same. So inflation, right? The inflation number stayed the same. There was no increase and there was no decrease, right? On PPI month to month, right? So this is obviously on the core side, it, it stayed the same. We still saw inflation increase 0.2%, right? We still saw it increase. If you look at the year to year, hold on, where's year to year? Uh, it was the week before, right? Hold on. And this is, this is where you got to look at from like an economic standpoint, inflation is still rising. This tells you right here that inflation is still rising. Uh, I said people anticipate it because they, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they, that's, and that's, you know, do I think, well, anybody, anybody that is a consumer doesn't need the data to tell them that inflation is still increasing. Right. I just went to the, I just went to the grocery store today and for something that I was, I was, you know, I was, I was probably paying anywhere between 7.99 and 9.99 a pound for steak and now it's 14.99 you know cereal i just bought a box of cereal i used to get them for 2 for 4 bucks and now it's 2 for 6 bucks you know so this number here i mean do, do i think that 
does this, what does this tell us? Is inflation slowing? Yeah, inflation's slowing, but it hasn't gone down. We're still rising. So do I think as long as from a fundamental standpoint, right? As long as inflation continues to go up and as long, so if, if PPI, if inflation continues to rise and a recession continues to present itself, you know, every, does everybody know what a recession is by, you know, by actual definition? Two quarters of negative growth. Yeah. So no, you're not expanding, you're contracting. So, and can, I mean, two quarters, I think we're at what, what quarter we're at four quarters now we've had four consecutive quarters of contraction because back in, I want to say back in Q2 is when it first, we started first talking recession saying that, and this was the second consecutive quarter of contraction. So as long as the recession still continues and contraction happens and inflation takes over, the U.S. dollar is going to continue to strengthen because it's the only safe haven, right? It's the ultimate safe haven. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me catch up. Yeah, that's why I, uh, I think it's November 13th or 10th. Yeah, it's this, the, look, this thing is still doing the dot, 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 bro. It's, it's, I don't know what it is, man. It's stupid. As long as the Dems are in power, the DXY will continue to go up. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the next, we really won't see now, depending on what happens with these mid midterms, right? The, you know, the, the Republicans have taken over the house. So, you know, at least it's not a, it's, it's not a, you know, um, at least there's an opportunity to st start curbing some spending. And we won't know until like January. So, but yeah. And then the next election is really going to determine what happens. You know, just look at the dollar index and correlate it with, with presidencies, right? There's, there's always a, a reason why the dollar is bullish and why the dollar is bearish. So um, a bag of chips used to be a dollar 19. Now it's too, yeah, I, I, dude, for real. I'm telling you, I, I, I see it all the time. I see how inflation is just going crazy. Uh, as long as inflation doesn't come down to 2% feds going to absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep, just keep, you know, I, I, I always watch, you know, what Powell's doing. And if you don't, you know, go on YouTube. So when, when they do this, you know, I, I don't know if you guys actually know this. So when you come over here and you see like FOMC members speaking, if you click on it, right. Um, it'll take you typically, there's always going to be a YouTube link where the federal reserve has, the, um, and you can just click on it. So I think if you go here to Federal Reserve, it'll take you to the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can go, and this is when I actually listen to the press conferences because you can actually start to understand the economics behind it and just the BS that comes out of this guy's mouth um, and how clueless they really are. But you really want to have an understanding because no matter where you live in what part of the world, it, I can honestly say that the Federal Reserve moves every market in this world. Um, you know. Do I do I think it moves the Somalian shilling? Probably not. But every major market inside of like the G20, whatever the Fed does is going to have a direct correlation, good or bad, against everything else. So yeah, uh, even your Thai massages are getting expensive. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's out there. Uh, so if we lose 105 on DXY, where would you say next key level would be to accumulate? No, no. If if so, if we take out, um. So dollar index for me, uh, currency index, let's go over here. So, so if we trade below here, right? If we trade below here, my next point that I'm going to be looking at uh, is going to be right here. So this, come on, this right here is where I'm looking. So, you know, somewhere around like this 96 to $97 range, that's where I want to see us come back into. So, and we'll see what happens there. Um, even if ECB raises the interest in a point, we could say it's really nice for Euro. Most of the EUE countries can't pay that high interest. Then we have an increase of the spread yield. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, e ECB is already, I mean, if you kind of watch what the ECB is doing, they're, they're, they're starting to have like in-house fighting. You know, I was, I was watching, um, you know, I watch Bloomberg all the time in my office here when I'm, when I'm trading 
and Bloomberg was just tearing up on what ECB and what uh, what's his name is 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 really kind of pushing because it's it's really starting to cause turmoil. You know, you see it, you see it, and, and that's honestly that's what happens when you have essentially what the ECB is. It's a conglomerate of countries that you know you 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 don't have the ability to tell individual um, central banks really how to run their show unless everyone's on the same page. So yeah, it is, it is a disaster for the European union. It is. <laughs> the last battle. Yeah. Why 96? What, why not 98? Uh, there's a reaccumulation that causes the break of the previous high. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's no manipulation in that though. Is there? got any manipulation in that reaccumulation no manipulation do you have manipulation here this isn't this isn't even the manipulation i'm talking about actually who knows what manipulation i'm talking about in that price action somebody knows who's got it Somebody's got it. The down move? No. Uh. Uh. Nope. No. Nope. No. No. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me change my stupid. My stupid charts. You guys are going to kick yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can hold on. Let's go right there. Can you guys see the can you guys see the manipulation? Yep. Yeah, right there. That's my X marks the spot. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's where all of this started back in February. So that's why that's why that's why I'm looking at there. Yep. So that's that's where I that's where I think we're going to come. You know, do you know, so it's you know, I'm not I'm not going to say well at, at 96 at 95 I mean it's it's realistically this whole price action. So I'm going to have I'm going to have an alert probably around like here at like 96500 and I'm just going to wait you know, obviously if euro USD gets into this price action here, that's that's where I'm definitely going to have my uh, have my alerts and just be really, really patient on what's going on there. But yeah, I've been I've been waiting on this move for a long time, long time. I've been waiting on this move. So, yeah, almost almost a year. I mean, what are we at? Like ten months? So you know, nine months. So that's that's kind of my piece, right? That's kind of what I'm I'm waiting on on um, on dollar index and euro. All right. Um, Okay, so let's see. Uh, we talked about that. We talked about EG. EG is pretty simple. Um, and EU is just a waiting game. You know, like for me, I'm I'm not really doing anything with EU at this point. So, you know, one one of two things needs to happen. We we either need to break this low down here, right? And then I can I'm back into a bearish order flow, and I'll do whatever I want to do with it now. Or I'm just going to kind of wait for us to kind of get up into a structure point. All right. Uh, and then the same price action on GU is the same, right? So GU and EU are really being driven by the dollar, right? You can see that in the dollar index on how it's being moved. So I am watching GU 
out of this price action right here because this is what caused this move. All right. Um, I will be looking. I will be, and you can see I've got all kinds of alerts up here. There we go. Um, we've got all, I've got all kinds of alerts up here and this is where I'm watching, right? If we can get up into that price action, that's where I'm going to really be paying attention to GU to short it. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, for me, it's a, it's a pretty clean play. I just got to wait for it. Right. And this is this redistribution in here. What, what do I have marked? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. This redistribution in here is where I'm waiting. So anything in here is where I want to come. So I did, I do have some positions that I do have open in here that I've taken massive, you know, massive profits out of, but I want to see, and specifically the, the key area that I'm looking at uh, for us to come into is this right here. This is where, did it cash rate 70? Let's see. I don't know if it's liking that. It's only up 15 pips, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's liking it. The days, the days of the days of like 200 pip moves on Kiwi pairs, I think are, are what you got to look at. Yeah, yeah, but this was, yeah, but it would, it would have happened right now. So <clears throat> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm hoping cause I want AU to come up. Uh, but this is, this is the price action that I'm looking at right here. This is where I'm looking at this price action from, uh, from Frankfurt price action on August 17th. This is where I'm waiting right here. I want to see us come into this right here. So if we can come into that, that'd be a really nice little, little play that I would be looking for. So you got an alert on it. Uh, so it's at what? Eight, nine, nine, you know, let's see, one, eight, nine, two. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a ways still from where I want to go. So I'm going to wait, you know, I, I, this is where I think, this is where I think we're going to come, but I'm going to kind of sit back and just wait on price action to tell me um, what you got, bro. Yeah, but what what do you got? What do you know? I mean, I don't what gets me what gets me to the five minute chart? You know, what gets me to the five minute chart? I'm on a four hour right now. Where's where's my reason for us to go bearish? Right? Where what's my reason? I mean, we're looking pretty bullish here. Right? We're looking pretty bullish. And realistically, I feel like this will just reaccumulate. Now, if there's a place that I will look, it's going to be out of this right here because it maintains order flow. That's the only place I would look. So, but I'll tell you right now, like for me, if, if the scenario was different, I, I'd be, I'd be looking for a scalp out of this, right? But knowing that it's a huge holiday week the dollar is going to be slowing down to, i can guarantee you tomorrow at the end of london you're going to get price action on the dollar that goes crap um i just don't think i don't think we're going to have enough time to really do anything this week in that price action so but this this would be the only area i'm looking that distro because it's maintaining the order flow here you know um and I feel like if if it takes out that high, it's definitely going to reaccumulate. So, but there's but there's no there's nothing to get me to go five minute. You know what I mean? Like from from where I look here, like what get, what gets me to say, you know, where's our weakness? You know, could you know could price come back into this area here? Sure, absolutely. You know, um, but it's just not it's not something I want to risk on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so. You know, GU, like I said, I'm just going to kind of sit back. Um, NU, now NU is getting pretty close to where I want it to come. Um, so same picture, right? Like if we, if we look here, come on, trading view. So that's our leg, right? So we are getting, we're getting into that premium area that I want it to do. And I mean, what's, what's this looking like to us, right? I mean, it's looking pretty clean. I just 
we're going to be here a while. You know, if you look right, if you look back at, at all the schematics, right, let's, let's just look at this one here. Right. Right. That was 13 days, right? This one here, this one here was four days. So that was a pretty quick, that was a quick one, right? But look at all your reversals, right? I mean, look at this one here. This one here was seven days. Um, this one here was seven days. So we're right at that seven day mark. You know, we're here, we're, we're at seven days. So I've got, I've got one drive, two drives, a third drive. Maybe we get a UTAD, right? Or maybe we just get weakness. So that's what I want to see, All right? I got, I've got my alert down here to see if we go lower. Um, and I won't put the UTAD up until I see that weakness. I want to see this show the sell orders come in, and then I'll throw a UTAD alert up here to see if we get the UTAD. But for me, there's nothing to trade here until, until it's boxed out and until it, it tells me which way we're going to go, up or down. Um, isn't EU in the redistro that broke the higher time frame low? Isn't EU in the redistro that broke the higher time frame low? My trading view catch up. Wow. She is taking her time. There we go. So where where is this redistro that you speak of? Are you talking about that one right here? Yeah, I mean, sure. I think we're going to come higher. I mean, you could see I've got an alert into that price action and I've got an alert to come into this price action. But that's not premium enough for me to sell it. If it is for you, then, you know, go for it. I don't, I don't think we're, at least for me, that this isn't, this isn't enough price action for me to want to sell it. So are we bullish? Yeah, we're bullish order flow, right? I mean, we broke... We broke this right here. That was bullish order flow, and that was the market cycle. So we're we're bullish in this right here after this break. So if there's only two ways for me to get into a short, it either needs to come into my point of interest of structure, or order flow needs to go back bearish. So that alert is here in case we go back bearish, and these alerts here are for me to get back into structure so I can look for a POI. But one thing's for sure is I'm not I'm not going to do anything out of here because it doesn't confirm anything for me yet. No, uh, Sal has to break the AR before we can expect a UTAD, right? The sign of weakness has to. Uh, no, you don't need you you don't need a sign of weakness to get a UTAD. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, not every not every schematic requires an uh, an actual sign of weakness. So, and then you have you have a minor sign of weakness and a major sign of weakness. So, the major sign of weakness will confirm you're in phase C. So, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect if you have a major, I wouldn't expect a UTAD at that point. But looking at NU, what do we know about NU? What do we know about NU? What can we use in our deliberation of what the heck NU is doing? Divergence with AU. So what's the divergence that we have? What is the divergence that we have? Kiwi is stronger. Okay. Kiwi is stronger. Yep. That means the Australian dollar is the weaker pair, which means who's leading? Yep, the Australian dollar is leading, right? Australian dollar has already shown you the weakness. So could we see a UTAD on NU and still maintain bearish order flow on AU? Absolutely. 
right? Absolutely. You know, you go back over here to AU and look at look at that massive divergence, right? AU has has confirmed the distro, confirmed demand getting taken out, confirmed a new order flow low, right? You know, this right here should be screaming at you with neon signs to say sell here, right? Yeah, I could care less about that. For me, that's that's not worth my risk. Yeah. Yeah. The the problem with that is where's your manipulation? Oh, you meant swept, sweeping it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is you can see my alert. That's that's the only place I'm looking. When we get up there. That's the only place I'll look. Right. I mean, we got we got some really really clean price action in here. So. You know, she gets up into that area. Great. You know, and this is where I'm, you know, I mean, just look how clean that thing is. That, that's a, that's a, it's a really pretty order flow maintaining type one distribution. So we get up there. Fantastic. That's what I want to see. So AU is a pretty, pretty clean set in stone for me, you know, how I want to trade it. And then obviously when we get into this reaccumulation here, um, you can see I already got my alert here at 68,400. I want to see what we do because I'm going to probably take some partials, you know, and then you got to be, you got to be mindful of the bigger picture because could we, could we just come right here and get another leg up? Absolutely. I mean, damn, this thing's hit once, maybe twice, three times, four times, could be out of character for a fifth time. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It can, you know, because in the bigger scheme of it, right. Yes. Did we come? Did we come into the 50% of the slingshot that broke? Absolutely. Could we, could we come into the 80? Yes. Could we come into, you know, the actual supply point up here? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Um, see a lot of USD pairs, DXY want to fill the CPI print imbalance. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, the, what's, what's, what's the, what's the main reason that we're seeing DXY kind of sell off? What is the main reason? The type one holds order flow. Uh, yep. Yeah. It's, it's maintaining my, my leg order flow. So, yep. I have a, I have a limit on it. What can what can we what can we attribute DXY shorting? Mm -hmm. So is it risk on or is it risk off? Chad says risk off. Ivan says on. <laughs> Which is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. risk on right? Risk on. So what we have to look for is we got to look for things that would have risk on. What are things that we would have risk on? Give me some, give me some things. Crypto? Well, all right. Crypto, but is the, are you seeing, are you, what's, what's one of the biggest re ways that we can identify or we can look to see if crypto is going to be risk on? What can we do? Because I'll tell you right now, crypto is not risk on right now. <laughs> what's 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 one of the easiest ways to look? No, no, for crypto, we'll we'll, we'll break this down. For crypto, what's one of the easiest ways to understand if we're going to see BTC price? Yeah, but. If 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 BTC prices go up twenty percent today, you've missed the move, right? So how can we anticipate risk on for crypto? And I'm just talking about crypto. Let's give me some reasons. Think outside the box here. And if you're not doing these things, you you might want to start incorporating it. What's one of the main reasons? Bitcoin ETF. Yep, absolutely. What is so let's let's look at let's look at uh has anyone paid attention to what uh Grayscale's ETF is at right now? 
Yes. What anybody pay attention to that? What is what is Grayscale's BT, uh, ETF at right now? You've never. Oh boy. Well, do you know the percentage? 8.44. Um, I don't know if it's at 8.4. I mean, I can just tell you, I know what the I know what the percentage is at right now. It's a 30. It's you're looking at the chart right now. Is it 8.44? Okay. Do you do you know as far as market cap what the percentage is in the differential in what the current spot price of BTC is and what the ETF differential is? It's so right now, if you were to buy the ETF, you're getting a 35 well, it, this at this morning. I, I haven't looked at it. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm not going to do the math on it right now, but, uh, at this morning at market open, it was a 35% sale off the price of BTC. So if you were to purchase it right now and, um, obviously in the bull run, you'll, you'll be, be able to make a 35% increase just off of that so grayscale etf is that is that indication of risk on or risk off it's a risk off right nobody if if it's 35 percent off of what current price is that's telling you that money's not flooding into crypto that's one way right what's another way that we can identify um whether or not we're going to see an influx of money into the crypto markets. What's another way we can do that? Miners hash rate. So what does miners hash rate have to do with the crypto markets? Give me, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, but talk to, talk to me. What, what, what does that have to do correlation? with what we're going to see their cost to mine btc their cost to mine btc okay so you're gonna to have to explain that to me whether or not it's worth their while okay so i'll give you the scenario minor hash rate is dropping off what's that telling us about i guess the cost of btc So is it good or, I guess the question would be, is it good or bad for hash rate? So that's saying miners aren't mining as much. Uh, no, actually it's not bad. So I want the hash rate to go down because as a miner, I make more coin when the hash rate goes down. It's not harder to mine. It's harder to mine when the hash rate increases. So... And and this is this is where I think a lot of people that don't mine have you know and it, it, it's nothing wrong with not knowing it but so and I'll give you a crash course in mining all right um, I'll give you an example here hold on let's go over to two miners I'll give you an example so here's here's why miners play a big part in this your industrial size mining farms are they holding onto the coin or are they selling it. What do you guys think? Well, no, they've got to they've got to pay costs. They're selling it, right? They got to pay power, so they've got to they've got to sell, right? They've got to sell. So if the hash rate actually starts to decrease, it lessens the sell pressure on the market. Okay, um, but I'll give you an example, right? So like here, we come over here, all right, and let's look at. Um, Let's look at, you know what? Let's look at Flux. Hold on. So to give you an example, right? To give you an example of Flux. So here's the hash rate, right? Here's the hash rate in the last 12 months. Hold on. Here's the hash rate in the last 12 months. So this was Ethereum merge right here. So you can see that the hash rate was relatively normal here for a very, you know, good amount of time. And then the hash rate, look what the hash rate did. 
quadru- well, yeah, quadrupled, right? To eight, you know, and now it's sitting at six. So it's down 25% from the all time highs. So what's that meaning? It's meaning that it is, there's more hash rate for the same amount of coin, right? Flux, flux, uh, I think it's like 30, 30 flux per, or 32.5, I think, per every two minutes, one block is found. So if there's more hash rate, that means that there's more, there's less coin for me to get in my, you know, out of my split. And with the hash rate increase, the difficulty increases, right? It's harder to find because instead of, just think about this, right? Instead of 10 people fighting for one block, now you have a hundred people, a whole lot harder, right? I mean, you could see, you can see here what we did. I mean, look at this difficulty increase. We went from July being 20,000 was the difficulty all the way up to 120. And now it's sitting at around a hundred. So when it comes to miners and I, and I know I've seen like in, in certain groups, like people are like, oh, BTC's hash rate all time high. Okay. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the price though. You know, um, there's there, you know, the hash rate just means that people are willing. So like right now I'm mining, right? I'm mining a ton of crap, you know, uh, you can come up here. You can see I'm mining the Oxa, mining Caspa, uh, Raptorium, Flux, um, Radiant, you know, I've got, uh, and then these are just the algorithms, you know, but I'm, I'm mining. Am I mining for a loss? You know, realistically on some of these, I'm mining for a loss, but I'm, I'm mining for yield, you know? I'm mining for like on Neoxa, right? Neoxa, I'm I'm mining and I'm I'm sitting on a bag of like 450,000 Neoxa right now. You know, that thing hit 2 cents, you know, almost 2 cents, almost 2.5, right? 2 and a half cents at one point. So, I'm 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 just trying to you know, hold on through this crypto winter, you know, because I'm not going to be selling anything at these lows because I know eventually we're going to be, you know, the next Bitcoin halving that's when we're going to get the bull mark, the, the bull run, you know, and that's when I'll sell is when we get to new all time highs. Um, but just to keep, you know, to have an understanding of what is going on in the crypto markets, the, the hash rate. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. The hash rate plays a part to that, but not as much as, as people think, right. There's a, there's a, a, a you know, you really have to have that understanding. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, who, who keeps an eye on wallets, right? When, when you start to see large amounts of main caps being moved, who keeps an eye on that? Who, who watches like the whale alerts? You know, what, what's it tell you when, you know, $250 million of Bitcoin just got transferred from a wallet to a centralized exchange on Coinbase? What's that tell you? Yeah, absolutely. Sells. They're getting ready to short it, right? They're going to close out. They're going to sell their, their coins and you're going to see a sell off in the market. So if you trade crypto or if you purchase crypto, or if you do anything in the crypto markets and you're not watching what the wallets, the main wallets are doing, what's, what's a huge bit of news? I, I shared it on Twitter this week. What's, what's, what's a huge bit of news that came out of Bitcoin this week? Anybody know? Dealing with a specific wallet. Anybody know? Anybody keep up with it? This is something, if you're in the crypto space, you, you, you need to know this. You need to be able to deals with FTX. No, 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 no. Yeah. Doesn't deal with FTX. Anybody know? <laughs> you remember but forgot the details? All right, give you a hint. What institution just just filed a patent for their BTC wallet? Nobody? Nobody knows? Oh, all right, hold on. Let me pull it up. Hold on. Guarantee it'll be on here somewhere. 
Actually, you know what? Here, son of a tech, son of tech shared it too. JP Morgan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They posted it this week. There it is right there. There it is right there. Why is that important? Why is that important? Anybody know? It's the first bank to do it, but more importantly, if if all the haters are saying that Bitcoin is going to zero, why is one of the largest banks in the world having a wallet for it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That means that the bottom is getting near, right? The bottom is getting near. Okay. So we we talked about the crypto side. What other risk on do we have? What other risk on things do we have that we can that we can start to attribute as saying, all right, the market's in risk on? You guys were talking about it earlier, right? People were saying indices, right? Indices is one. Absolutely. Do we see do we see an appreciation on indices of late money coming in? Absolutely. Now, you know, just keep in mind this is just holding order flow, right? We're still in a very much bearish market and you look at SPX which is the real driver, right? When you when you think about market cap, SPX is the largest market cap indice in the world. So when you look at where SPX is, we still have a good ways. I mean, SPX, I know it's frozen, but SPX is still right here. You know, we still have a ways to get up here. But how can, how can, we, how can we determine what is going on? Um, US 30 leading the way shows more safety defensive positions. Well, what, what is causing US 30? to be as bullish as it is. Tech, no, tech is in the NASDAQ. Yeah, tech is the NASDAQ. And NASDAQ is bearish as can be. Yeah, if you look at NASDAQ, NASDAQ's bearish as can be. So there's there's a couple of driving factors that's making US 30. Uh, first quarter? No, no, bro, we're still, we're in Q4, man. We're in Q4. Yeah. Yeah. So you could see you can see where SPX is, right? Now there's a couple of factors that are leading US 30, right? Um, first and foremost, US 30 has the JPY. No, now you now you're just now you're just grabbing at straws, bro. <laughs> uh no, no. All right. So we know NASDAQ is is led by tech, right? We know that US 30 obviously is the largest 30 companies in the US stock exchange, right? Um, now, a couple of those companies had some huge, huge news coming out, right? We've seen, you know, the big one was Disney, right? We saw, we saw there was a changing of some management positions and some old leadership coming back into Disney. Um, we also saw that what we saw that um, there was a couple of oil companies and a couple of travel companies that really posted some good earnings on the US 30 that gave the Dow kind of the push it's getting. But now when you look at SPX, and we know that SPX is the benchmark against all the others, is this price action here showing you any kind of bullishness? What do you guys think? Short term? Yeah, but are we in an area of supply that caused the break? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So at this point, like for me, the buys are done. I'm, I'm more interested in waiting for shorts. You know, secondly, the other thing I've got to look at is, you know, I want to really pay attention to, and, and what, what's, what's the one report that we can look at you know, obviously it's a delayed report, but what's a report that we can look at to see exactly what's going on?
Nope, not CPI. Uh, Apple, Tesla, and Amazon all rolling over and they make up 17% of the SPX. Do they really make up just those three companies make up 17% of the SPX? Really? Seven companies do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, the top seven. Yeah, I gotcha. What can we look at? We can look at the COT reports, right? COT reports are delayed, but that'll tell you exactly where they're moving their money. And if you're seeing that they're moving their money out of dollar futures, yep. yeah, there you go. Somebody got it in there. Good job, bro. Um, if you're seeing that they're, they're moving their money out of the dollar and you can see that they're actually buying contracts on the indices, that's, that's telling you something, right? That's telling you that they're risk on. So we know indices, right? We know indices. We know crypto is a good, good source to see if we're risk on. What's another one? Give me some other ones. Real estate? No, bro. <laughs> no. 10-year? No, the 10-year is not risk on. Nope. What about currencies? What currencies can we look at for risk on? Mm, UJ? Nope. Nope. There's three futures. Three futures that we would look at. What would they be? <laughs> Swiss franc? Nope. Man, we're just grabbing at straws now. Yeah, there you go, bud. The Australian? The Kiwi? And what's the other one? One more. One more. The CAD. There you go. The CAD. These right here, risk ons. They're anti per diems. They are soft currencies. Right? So you can look at indices, you can look at the crypto markets, you can look at specifically the odd, the Kiwi, and the CAD, right? Those are things you want to look at, especially as a trader, right? For me, I've always said that it's not as, it's not, let me just hit the red and green button, you know, and when I'm up a couple of dollars, close out and be like, damn, I'm a trader now, you know? Now, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a, a level of understanding, there's a level of finesse, there's a level of you know, intimate relationship with, with the charts and understanding the macro and microeconomics that's going on that makes you, makes you a tremendous trader, you know? What you got here, bro? What you got? Oh, what it, what's it doing? Uh, Australian dollar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is something that I pay attention to now, this thing that sucks is cot reports are delayed right you won't be able to pull up a cot report from today's price action so you got to go you got to go back and you gotta you've got to look at them so yeah absolutely you know and this is this is this is something that you want to pay attention to and you can actually see the contracts that are being open closed and where they're moving to so the three futures yeah, yeah, the Australian, the New Zealand, and the CAD. Yep. Tells your risk on. Yep. Now, what, what would be the risk off? What, what are the three currencies that are risk off? What do you mean, but what about them? What do you mean, what, do you, what about them? JPY, USD, and the chef. Yes, absolutely. Those are going to be your safe havens, right? That's when you're in risk off. Right. If they are bullish or bearish. Well, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> yes. If they're bullish. Yes. Correct. Yep. So, and then if we see, if we see the yen, the dollar, and the Swiss franc, right, that's going to be your risk off. Absolutely. Yep. Now, is it always 100%? No, because the yen has been falling out of the sky for a very long time, right? Probably, I think now for like three years, the yen has been bearish. So how can, how can we decipher what's going on with the yen, right? If the, if, the, if the yen futures is just being decimated bearish, What do we take from that?
indices are bullish. Nope. They have other goals. Nope. So if 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 let's just say hypothetically, and and well, we can't even we don't even need to say hypothetically because we know right the last twenty four months, market's been risk off, right? So why is the bear? Why is the JPY been bearish? Uh, between two current interest rates. I know people also use interest rate differentials between two currencies. For what though? You know, people also use what? What do we know about? Well, what do we know about? Um, they won't raise interest rates, the Bank of Japan, right? Okay, so, but but why? What's What's going on with the Japanese economy? There you go, QE, absolutely. Very good, man, awesome. Quantitative easing, yes, right? QE, they're the first, right? If you guys don't know this, definitely learn about QE. I talked about this in a, in a training I did uh, with some of the guys in my group couple of weeks ago, but QE is the, the bank of Japan is the first bank that's ever done it, right? They started it years ago. And obviously it's, it's a big fashion term now, you know, and you'll hear like the fed talk about it and stuff like that. But so we know, we know that the, the yen is not going to increase rates, right? So if we know that the yen is bearish, what's that tell us about one, what's driving the market? So if, if, let me ask you this. So if the yen futures is bearish without looking at any other charts, what do we know is going to be bullish? UJ, right? Good. So if we know yen futures is bearish, we know UJ is going to be bullish because they're diametrically opposed. So what's that tell us? What does that tell us? If, if all you had on your board was UJ bullish, yen futures bearish, What's that telling you? What about the USD? I think you're onto something, bro. What about the USD? What about the dollar? The dollar's rising? All right, more, more specifically, what's going on with the dollar? I mean, we know the dollar would be rising. Short supply, nope. The dollar is driving the market, right? If the yen futures buy full market, <laughs> yes, yes. If 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 the yen futures is bearish, UJ is bullish. Sell whatever you got to sell: comic book collections, your house, you know, your neighbor's truck, whatever it is. Go full margin and buy the dollar because absolutely, we know that the dollar is driving everything. So. Just by knowing that yen futures is bearish, UJ is bullish diametrically to that, and we can see that the dollar is bullish because of this, we know that the dollar is controlling everything. So do I need to look at, you know, do I need to worry or, or, or concern myself with looking at 15 other charts? Or can I just sit there and say to myself, okay, so if the dollar is going to continue to show me this, I'm going to continue to play this off of continuation, right? So understanding understanding what's happening in that futures market and understanding your diametrically opposed and your comparable strength assets is important because that tells you what you know essentially what it tells me is what to stay away from day to day week to week and what to clump together and make sure I'm watching so that I can potentially get into some positions that ordinarily I'd be waiting on you know, extra confirmations for, but because I, you know, an example would be this, right? If dollar has reaccumulated, right? Let's just say hypothetically dollar has reaccumulated. Do I need to wait for signs of strength on say like UJ for the buy? No, right? All I need to wait for is confirmations for an entry and just continue to look for buys. So yeah, and I think I, I yeah. I, I, I would definitely say that I, I've gone off on a tangent with this, but hopefully, hopefully understanding like the ins and outs of this brings you to some kind of, uh, for me, at least when, when, I, when I really learned this, what it did is it allowed me to be more organized and it allowed me to really weed out things I'm not looking at. Like every week, you know how I say, well, okay, this is what I'm looking at this week. You know, well, the reason I'm not looking at the other crap is because 
it doesn't give me confluence. It's not, it's not, there's no comparable strength that's, that uh, there's, there's comparable strength divergence between what I'm looking at. And I don't want to fight that. Right. I don't want to have to, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather jump on a float and just float down river than try to paddle upstream in a lightning storm with crocodiles in the river. You know what I mean? I'd rather take the smooth sailing. Um, micro and fundamentals absolutely add to your trading and help with, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's, there's often times where I'll tell you right now, and a lot of you guys can attest to it where sometimes I just don't know what's going to happen because we have just a, you know, the, 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 the balance of the scales is kind of just teetering, right? You have price action that's telling you one thing, fundamentals are telling you another, and you're just kind of like stuck in between. So what do I do? I just set alerts on the top and bottom and wait for us to determine which way we're going to go with it. You know, that's essentially what I do with it. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of ideally what I'm looking at, you know, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see how I can get back segue back into these charts, but for the most part, like I said, I would, I I'm, I'm looking at AU and you, I'm not really looking at any dollar crosses really uh, per se, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just waiting, you know, you look at like you chef, right. You chef is, you know, you chef is getting into the area where I want to see us do something but we're also in a massive distribution, you know? So something like this, I may just wait for NFP to come out and see which way we're going to go with it. You know, same thing like UCAD, you know, I mean, UCAD is, you know, UCAD's an inactive distribution, right? I'm anticipating UCAD to come down into my discounted area. This being my first point of interest, this being my second, right? That's what I want to see UCAD come down into. Um. You know, the, the main things I'm really paying attention to, and, and I think UJ as well, right? What's UJ doing? Yeah, UJ, I'm not, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come lower as well. You know, I talked about gold, you know, gold is, is something I'm definitely interested in. You know, you can see, you can see that we're here. I'm still looking for us to come down into the mid 1500s, right? Off the higher time frame. And do we have evidence of sellers in this market? Well, just look at, look at gold, look at what she's doing, you know? For me, I like the price action. You know, sellers definitely came into the market. Distribution, redistro, redistro. I mean, look at, I haven't seen price action on gold like that in a minute. You know, it's been, it's been really, really a long time since I've seen that. So what do I want to see gold do now is I want to see us come back into this. I want to see, I want to see if we can get back above 1760 into this box right here. That's where I want to sell from, either this or that 80%. That's where I want us to come. You know? Um, yeah. I mean, so that's that's really what I'm what I'm kind of eyeing. You know, I want to see if we can get into that. And, you know, on the indice side, yeah. I mean, do the shorts are are the shorts still something I'm looking for? Yeah. You know, and pay attention on indices, just pay attention to this. Anyone notice the price action? Um how how easy is it to sell it, right? If you you if you've never heard the term, you know, the the bulls take the stairs, right? The bears jump out the window. Just look at how easy it is when you catch a short. It's a quick move. It's a quick move. It's a quick move. Quick move, right? Quick move. The buys the buys take forever, right? The buys are walking it up ever so slightly. So when we're in this premium, I mean, I don't need a catch big moves right i took i mean it wasn't it wasn't the greatest play but i took i took an entry the other day gave me like a one to six and out of this 80 percent of the redistro give me a one to six okay you know this this sucked i mean it, it took forever it took like 12 hours to get down there you know um but whatever it is what it is um i think i've gotten into every quick move and i haven't partialed once yeah, I mean, what's your journal telling you to do now? And journal's probably telling you to take some partials, man. Pay yourself. If you if you had a cookie jar and you put 10 bucks every day in that cookie jar, how much money are you going to have it at the end of the year? Right? You're going to and, and if you don't take anything out of the cookie jar, right? 
just let it accumulate in there. You got to do that. You got to partial. I'll tell you right now, and I've said it a long time for, for, for a while, like on my one to 100 plays, I'm, you will never catch me telling you that I'm holding that full volume. Hell no. You know, I, I am partially out. I'm paying myself, you know, because the, the one thing that's guaranteed is if I can put money in the bank there, that that's going to, that's what's going to, I'm going to be able to withdraw at the, at the end of the month. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, listen, I've got, I've got to run. I've got, uh, I've got some stuff I got to do with the kids this, this evening. Uh, anybody else have any last minute questions, anything you want to look at um, real quick? I'll, I'll take a look at it. And uh, for the love, let's see, there we go. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm hopeful. Hopefully I can, you know, I, I gave you some information on the economics, the fundamentals, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, if you guys want to review it, I'll definitely, I'll post it once it's done this evening. So, um, but awesome. Thanks for hopping on and I will catch everybody later. Have a good one.